Hi, welcome viewers. This is a lecture on ethical practices in research. I will try to reflect upon some of the important ethical issues involved in conducting research. So, we will begin with a very brief explanation of what happens in the research process just to see how ethics becomes important there. Then afterwards, we will try to see the historical evolution of uh, research ethics or rather ethical issues in research, how this has become uh, an important issue in today's world. Then finally, we will see some of the issues as such. So, that is the way this uh, lecture is planned. So, the first let us see the research process. This is not a very uh, scientifically classified account of what happens when we do research. It is just a commonsensical account of it, the research process. We begin with uh, a problem or an issue normally. This need not be the case always, but usually this is a case that the researcher starts with a problem. And uh, quite often we can see that here itself ethics becomes important. Many of these issues which a researcher tries to understand would be resolving an issue in the society which would drastically improve sometimes the lives of people in the society. So, in that way there itself we find a role of ethics. Then we will start with the examining the problem and the direct and indirect literature related to the problem which we normally describe as uh, literature review or uh, you conduct a review of the already existing research in this domain to understand your problem from a right perspective and also to situate it in the correct angle. Then we will go to the setting the objectives and hypothesis formation where exactly some of the problem and its uh, outcome are narrated. Finally, again you also discuss about the methodology where how data is collected in various disciplines this process varies from discipline to discipline and then also how anal analysis is done and then finding and result how what kind of uh, results what kind of findings are you planning to come out of with and then publishing them in a research journal. And this is a very crucial part of it publishing. So, it begins with identification of the problem and sort of ends with publishing one stage of research is over. The other stage is now when you apply this research in actual situation maybe in the industry or in somewhere else. I am not discussing those aspects here, but we could see that all the steps the six steps described here or narrated here we can see that ethics plays a very important role starting from identifying the problem till publishing. For instance, in publishing there are several issues like authorship, issues related to authorship, whom should be given credit when a paper is being published in a scientific journal or a technical journal. Again, uh, plagiarism issues related to publishing all these are very important ethical issues. So, we will very briefly try to analyze some of these problems today. So, ethics and research the term before we really get into the lecture get into the problems let us see what is ethics. So, ethics uh, the term ethics is derived from the Greek word ethos which means character. So, here itself we could see that good character is associated with some sort of a moral integrity of a person. And when you try to apply this into the research domain we could see that the moral integrity of the researcher is extremely important. So, in that sense we can connect these two terms. Again this is important in ensuring a reliable process with trustworthy and valid findings. These two things are very important. The valid findings of a research which sort of concludes the research activity at certain stages is very important and this is because research depends a lot on public trust. It is crucial for research and uh, hence researchers must be responsible for their work they have to convince the public, they are indebted to the public. See many professional associations uh, in uh, engineering or in medicine or various other domains, they have come up with their own ethical codes and uh, their own general ethical guidelines which are relevant to their disciplines to ensure integrity and trust, this public trust. When we try to understand what ethics has to do with research, the ethical dimensions of research. We can see that on most occasions they are, there are guiding principles, general guiding principles in research 
and ethics have a very role to play in this context. As I already mentioned from the right from the uh, right from the beginning the selection of a research problem itself ethics plays a very important role and again there are so many important ethical issues that affect the conduct of research the very conduct of research and also researchers how researchers are related to each other particularly in today's world where there is a lot of collaborative work taking place people have to engage in relation, very important professional relationships. There is a lot of uh, you know questions of sharing certain resources, laboratories and finally also publishing the kind of uh, findings they have come out uh, of uh, research work. In all these contexts, the entire conduct of business need to be regulated by very strong ethical guidelines. And how to treat the participants in research? There are very important, this, this, these questions are very important. There are a set of questions which deal with how to treat the participants in research, particularly when human beings are involved and also when animals are involved. In many domains we know in science, in many domains human beings and animals are involved in research, particularly animals. And when it comes to medicine and biotechnology, human beings are also involved in research. And even in social sciences, human beings, the participation of human beings are unavoidable in today's world. So, in that case, there are very important issues, ethical issues that have to be taken into account. And again, the need to be uh, truthful and uh, transparent. One has to be truthful. These are basic, very elementary ethical values. And again, another very important domain is risk management, because every research involves, particularly if it is scientific research, many research activities involve the question of risk and we cannot avoid that. Our aim should not be avoiding all the risks that are involved in, but rather how to properly take care of, how to properly manage risk. Be aware of the fact that there is risk involved. There are risks involved in the research process and we should also be prepared to tackle them, to manage them, to properly intervene and interfere at the right time, so that we can minimize risk. So, these are some of the important issues. Then again, willingness to share the benefits, that is very important. Every research will have a social benefit, a personal benefit. And how far researchers are willing to share this? This might come in terms of publications, sometimes in terms of uh, uh, patents or creation of intellectual property and many other aspects of uh, the findings of research. So, whether researchers are ready to share this with others, those who are the stakeholders, the fellow researchers, other stakeholders, participants in research, subjects in research, even people who help them in conducting the research, this has to be shared. So, but it need not be shared in the same way. For example, with participants in research or rather with collaborators in research, there is a kind of intellectual sharing. When you publish an article, in a scientific journal, you need to consider very serious authorship issues here. But when it comes to subjects of research, the sharing might be having certain very important financial implications and other implications. So, all these things have to be taken into account and properly taken care of when you do research. And what is more important is very simple, act with responsibility. And this term responsibility has a very wide meaning in the context of ethical research. And in one sense, we can say that ethics is all about responsibility. So, one has to be responsible and show this responsibility in various ways when research is conducted. See, I will just uh, very briefly explain the case of uh, Professor Hong Hook Suk, who is uh, being celebrated as the most important uh, Korean scientist, who shot into fame due to certain uh, inventions he made or rather he claimed that he had made. In an article in Science in 2004, the South Korean scientist Hwang Woo Suk claimed that he cloned a human embryo and extracted stem cell from it. It was regarded as a remarkable accomplishment if it were true at that time and many implications to the science of medicine and treatment of various ailments. This discovery or that or rather this invention would have been helped a lot of people all over the world 
who are suffering from various diseases and ailments. The consequences are very briefly an individual skin cells could be used to make a cloned embryo and from that extract kidney, liver or heart stem cells. So this is this definitely you can see quite obviously will have a lot of implications, positive implications in the domain of medicine. And these cells could then be used to replace diseased tissue with no fear of organ rejection because it is uh, extracted from one's own body and cure diseases such as Alzheimer's disease and diabetes. Professor Voshuk shot into fame, no, no surprise and he became his country's that is South Korea's most prominent scientist and was called its national treasure at that point of time. He has been celebrated, but the end of the story is really sad. An academic panel investigating his work found that he faked his claim. I am just reading it. His claim to have efficiently developed 11 patient specific stem cell lines was false. He admitted that a female researchers in his own lab has supplied X for his research which is actually a very important unethical practice. He could not have, he should not have done that. Then again the 2004 paper was written on fabricated data to show that the stem cells match the DNA of the provider although they did not. And again what is the consequence? What has happened finally? In March 2006 he was fired from his professorship at uh, Seoul National University and was charged with fraud and embezzlement. So this was the sad end of the story. So let us see some of the ethical issues particularly pertaining to this case which we have discussed and also some of the associated issues which we can consider in this context. One is the unethical and quasi behavior of the scientist and also his team members. Then uh, fabrication of data is uh, one of the most prominent ethical violations which uh, this particular case is involved in. Dishonesty no doubt in that, lack of trust because he has violated all basic principles of trust and the public trust is completely lost in this particular case and lack of integrity, cheating. So all these are some of the specific issues pertaining to this particular case which we have discussed. But there are certain associated issues which we can find which will be relevant when we discuss uh, research ethics. Something which has to do with plagiarism or plagiarizing. A plagiarism is a situation where you take someone else's work and present it as your work either through writing or uh, presenting it as uh, in, in publishing in journals. When you publish a research article, you publish it as your original work, but you are lifting it or you are taking it from someone else's work without properly acknowledging. Again making unfounded charges about another researchers. This often happens in uh, research laboratories and also collaborative research and also in, in certain other contexts where research takes place. Breach of confidentiality in many domains of research this happens because particularly for instance in uh, certain domains like uh, medicine, uh, medical research or even in social sciences this can happen because confidentiality of participants or subjects are very important, uh, privacy of participants have to be maintained and uh, they have uh, trusted the researcher and revealed a lot of information about them and researcher now has a lot of information about the subject and this is happening because the subjects trust the researcher. So they hope that or rather they believe that the researcher will maintain confidentiality, but breach of confidentiality in that sense is a very severe unethical practice. Discrimination, this again is a very common thing that happens in many contexts, uh, discriminations on the basis of gender, caste particularly in the Indian context, race, nationality and the language you speak and several other factors which decide our, uh, our personality or our character. Negligence, this is what I have already mentioned, a researcher should show responsibility. Responsibility is one of the most important things and researcher should conduct his research with responsibility so that avoid all kinds of possibility of negligence because sometimes negligence can lead to harm. Truthful and responsible data management, research involving human and animal participants. 
So, this is another very important domain, very sensitive domain when animals and human beings are involved one has to be extremely careful. First of all try to avoid all situations of harm wherever it is possible to avoid and where it is not possible to avoid harm as I mentioned earlier one has to be prepared for managing it properly. All care has to be taken because life is precious and it is important and researchers should respect life, should show utmost respect to human and animal life. And then in the context of social research there are several other issues which we may not be discussing in detail in this lecture. Now again when you try to specifically understand the domain of research ethics we can see that it deals with norms of conduct, norms or conduct for researchers how to distinguish between acceptable and unacceptable behavior. For example, plagiarism is unacceptable, there is a reason for that or discrimination is unacceptable. There are reasons for why they are unacceptable, because they are all impediments in the way of truth, finding truth in research. Again critically examining the ethical questions researchers face and how they ought to respond trying to understand the moral, cultural, social, legal and political implications of research. Here is again we could see responsibility coming in. One has to be careful about the cultural factors because when a research is conducted in a one particular culture the implications of that research, the way in which it is understood all will be different when it is the same research is conducted in some certain other culture. And this is very important in today's world because we are living in a globalized world and uh, uh, research which takes place in uh, one of the distant corners of this globe will have implications to all human beings in this world. Say for example, a medicine research in the uh, pharmaceutical industry, the medicine which is going to be invented or designed will have implications on the health of all human beings in the globe. So, in that sense but certain experiments cannot be conducted in certain areas and one has to be sensitive towards the cultural aspects then social and legal certain countries law will be different in different countries. So, certain experiments or certain research cannot be conducted in certain countries but while in certain other countries the law might be a different then political implications of research. So, all these things a researcher might be aware of and uh, should be sensitive to basic responsibilities and commitments to researchers. This involves one's own one's commitments to other researchers, one's own students, one's own professors, one's own fellow researchers to the society, to the scholarly community etcetera. And uh, in when we examine why unethical behavior happens, we could see that there are several reasons for this, particularly in today's world there are the chances of uh, you know research world and encountering uh, unethical practices are more compared to some 50 years ago. The reason is that research is frustrating, hence researchers might look out for an easy way out. So, there are many such attempts might be uh, severely unethical. Self interest, ignorance and relativism, people do not know that certain practices are unacceptable and unethical. People may not be knowing, they do not have the awareness again relativism, they think that it is ok and uh, which may not be ok in certain other places or certain other individuals. So, when they collaborate this might create a problem. So, the ethical practices when particularly in collaborative research, it is important that all the collaborators agree upon certain practices before they really get into the process pressures to publish or obtain grants or contracts. This is another thing, today's world there is a lot of pressure to publish, publish or perish has become the mantra in many places. Many research organizations and universities appoint people with the expectation that they come up with wonderful research in research. They, they are ready to fund their researchers uh, with money, but they also expect results and if this does not happen that will affect the job security of the researchers. So, naturally there is a lot of pressure to publish 
and also to obtain grants and contracts. So, in this context out of frustrations researchers might give up for self interest and look for easy ways out which might result in unethical behavior. So, one has to be very careful in dealing with them. Again career ambitions guided by self interest, the pursuit of profit or fame, then poor supervision of students and trainees and poor oversight of researchers. This is again uh, very important because uh, as professors or as senior scholars researchers might have certain responsibilities towards the scholarly community and one of such responsibilities towards one's own students and it is very important that people should guide their students properly, their trainees also properly and then again uh, insensitivity to potential harm. People have to be extremely careful about this because certain actions or certain consequences of research might end up in harming human beings or otherwise even nature, animals. So, one has to be very careful try to avoid it, irresponsible behavior and attitude. So, as I mentioned responsibility is so key term in research and uh, because ethical lapses in research can significantly harm other people. So, when we talk about a responsibility, every researcher has a responsibility to negatively to prevent harm, I would start with that. I say negatively because researchers research work or the findings of research or the products and consequences of research might harm people or even the process itself might be harmful. So, it is very important that researchers are aware of it and there are different types of harm intentional, negligent and reckless. You should avoid all the three types of harm and try to prevent it. The second one is the positive uh, aspect of responsibility where researchers should understand that their entire work and career is based upon public trust. So, they have a responsibility towards public, they are indebted to the public and public welfare is very important. They should know that public supports or rather the trust is built upon the expectation that research work might end up or result in some sort of development or progress in the society, it might benefit the society. So, with that expectation researchers are supported by the society. So, researchers should keep this in mind that they have a positive ethical moral responsibility towards public that their work should benefit the public in a significant manner. And uh, now, let us very briefly try to understand the evolution of modern research ethics because research itself is, in, is a comparatively modern uh, phenomenon. Earlier also people used to conduct research, but the way they used to conduct it was very different. Now, around 18th century onwards the way in which research as we understand today came into existence. Prior to that also research was there, but they used to perform it in a very different environment with different priorities. Most of the researchers of earlier days were very spirited people and uh, they, they really enjoyed what they were doing and they were not uh, constrained by several factors which mo a modern day contemporary day researcher my, uh, uh, researchers are constrained by. So, uh, if you try to understand the evolution of modern research ethics, we could see that uh, the protection of human subjects involved in uh, research projects was one of the primary concerns of research ethics in the modern day. Primarily after the second world war this has become a major issue and all over the world this has been discussed. Immediately after the second world war with the victory of uh, the allied forces, a uh, lot of atrocities and cruelties the Nazis, the Nazi Germans have done to the Jews were exposed, Jews and the gypsies and old people, the sick people all of them suffered immensely under the rule of the Nazis. So, uh, in this context a uh, lot of discussions happened all over the world. So, there are certain milestones we could find in the development of modern research, I will very briefly explain them. The first one is the Nuremberg trials which took place somewhere around 1949 which has ultimately come up with certain codes. 
Then the Tuskegee syphilis study which lasted for nearly about 40 years in the US and uh, which also exposed uh, some uh, grossly unethical practices that took place in uh, the state of Alabama. Then the declaration of Helsinki with, uh, which, uh, which, which has come up with some of the very important guidelines of how research needs to be performed. Following that in 1979 the Belmont report. So, these are some of the historical milestones and then later on this we could see that all these important events have taken place in the domain of or rather they are more directly uh, related to medicine or health where human beings are particularly involved in. As I mentioned the explicit concern was protection of human subjects involved in research projects. And then again we could see that in this context the animal welfare act in the US which has come up with some of the or rather expressed some of the concerns when we conduct research on animals or when animals are involved as subjects. Proper care has to be taken and we researchers have uh, the responsibility to value the life of animals as well. We cannot just ignore them. So, those things are articulated in the animal welfare act and many countries in the world today have laws or legal suggestion how animals have to be respected and particularly in research institutions and uh, organizations we have ethics bodies today or ethics committees or institutional review boards all of them will take care of or will look into the kind of research that is happening in the within the institute within the organization and try to suggest ethical guidelines to be followed when researchers conduct their research. And then of course, some general issues some of them which we have already uh, seen. And uh, when we talk about very briefly about Nuremberg, when we talk about Nuremberg trials which I have already indicated, uh, they, these trials have examined the medical experiments conducted on concentration camps uh, prisoners by the Nazi physicians. The effects of many toxic chemicals and other substances were uh, tested on the bodies of Jews and gypsies and euthanasia was performed on the sick and disabled civilians without their consent and permission and underlined the need for postulating this these trials actually underlined the need for postulating certain universal codes of conduct that would guide any further medical research in the name of science. So, scientific research cannot be blindly carried out by scientists just because the consequences are going to be good for humanity just because the end is good you cannot conduct it in any manner you want. The means also are very important the ends and means are intimately interconnected one has to be careful about that. So, the creation of Nuremberg court took place in 1949 where uh, there is an explicit emphasis on voluntary consent. People have to be consented people have to be taken uh, the subjects permission or consent it has become so central for research involving human subjects thereafter. The Tuskegee syphilis study is another unfortunate incident that had happened in the United States one will be surprised to know this it has happened for 40 years from 1932 to 1972 when it was exposed by the media to the public and it was conducted by the US public health service on the blacks. So, only blacks were selected for uh, as subjects for the study which also highlights how racially motivated this scientific study was. And the medical study monitored to discover the effects of untreated syphilis. So, people with syphilis and without syphilis they were all monitored by the physicians and the people who had syphilis were not treated even though medicines became available uh, slightly later they were never given they were never administered this medicine because the purpose of this study was to see the effects of untreated syphilis and no consent was taken because uh, many of this uh, participants did not know for what this study was conducted and they were, they were never being told they were only told that they were treated for bad blood no other information was given and no consent was obtained. The intention of the study was not revealed to the subjects at all 
and no treatment was given even though it was available and in that process many people have lost their life, many people were injured and finally, there was a public outcry against this uh, when it uh, appeared in the newspapers and uh, the study was stopped, the research study was stopped by the uh, US public health services. So, it was obvious that it was a race based study. So, sometime back I mentioned about discrimination, here there is a gross violation of the principle, it was based on discrimination, no whites were studied uh, as subjects in this uh, research work. Again the declaration of Helsinki in 1964 mandated that all biomedical research projects involving human subjects carefully assess the risk of participation against the benefit. So, there should be a risk benefit analysis done and if the benefits are more the study can be conducted, respect the subjects privacy. So, this is what I mentioned about confidentiality, every individual human being who participates in this subject in the study in the research study as subject has to be respected as a human person, his or her privacy should be maintained. So, all information about him or her should be maintained confidential and minimize the cost of participation uh, to the subject. So, risk management, proper risk management has to be taken into account. Then Melbourne reported in 1979 from the National Commission for the Protection of Human Subjects of Biomedical and Behavioral Research was another hallmark in this process of evolution of research. Again, all these things which we have seen the right from Nuremberg trial to Belmont, all of them emphasize the need for voluntary consent from participants. So, people have to be respected, their human rights have to be respected, their permission have to be taken, their consent has to be taken, their information have to be kept confidential, all these things are highlighted and recognize the importance of autonomy of individual. Each individual is recognized as an autonomous entity that we have to respect him and her by virtue of the very fact that him, he or she is an individual human being. So, the Animal Welfare Act provides guidelines and regulations for research with animals. Other dimensions were added subsequently. There are many other issues which got, uh, st which, which actually uh, made the domain of research ethics stronger and stronger. All of them affirm the importance of responsible behavior and different aspects of responsible behavior from the side of uh, researchers involved. And when you uh, try to address some of the specific concerns like human participants as subjects in research. As I mentioned some important principles are consent to participate in the study, for that you know all information about the study whatever is available should be given to the uh, participants, withdraw from the study at any stage of the study and uh, or refuse to take part in research projects. So, these things have to be respected, confidentiality I repeat personal information or identifiable data should not be disclosed without participants consent. For example, there are several things when a study is conducted this has to be published in a journal and uh, several information about the subjects need to be published but certain information about the subject should be withheld. For example, the name, the place from her, where, the address and all such details which might help others to identify the identity of the person should be not should not be published by the uh, researchers. This is very important to maintain confidentiality. Security, data and samples collected should be kept secure and anonymized where appropriate and safety. Participants should not be exposed to unnecessary or disproportionate levels of risk. So, and but when you come to animals, research which where uh, animals are used as uh, subjects, there again we have to be, uh, we have to understand that animal life is also precious. Using animals as models 
that are in different ways uh, researchers use animals in today's uh, context. People use animals as models for humans to understand disease process, particularly in the domain of uh, biomedical research, in pharmaceutical research, animals are used extensively and to develop effective uh, prevent, uh, preventative and therapeutic measures such as vaccine or medicines. Using animals as models in toxicity testing, certain toxic substances, if they are exposed to such substances, what are the impact and how they can be uh, uh, cured. All these aspects have to be studied for that animals are being used. All those involve harming animals because eventually they are, they will get harmed in this process. Do we have the right to do that? That is a very important question because in the case of human beings at least the consent is being taken. We take the permission of the human being, an adult human being, but in the case of animals this is not the case. We do not take the permission of animals to conduct study upon them. Can we do that? Under what circumstances can we do that? Again that is another thing. We cannot just abruptly do it. Only when it becomes necessary we can do that. Again are we not using them for food? So, one can definitely come up with such an argument. We are anyway eating them, then what is wrong in uh, using them for experimental purposes? Even if they are killed or harmed, what is wrong in it? Because we are using them as food and to use them as food we are killing them. But is there any substance in such an argument? Is using animal for food and or using and using an animal for uh, research experimentation, are they the same, are they at the same level? Can we compare them with one another? See these are some of the issues. Can we use all species of animals? What is the criteria? See for instance example, some of the animals which are very commonly used are mice, then uh, rats are used very commonly by pharmaceutical research. Monkeys are being used because they are very close to the human species, but can we use chimpanzees which are very close to us? If we cannot use chimpanzees because some chimpanzees exhibit certain skills which are uh, evidence uh, which suggests that their brain is quite advanced compared to other animals. So, can we use them? So, these are some of the issues which uh, we have to tackle when we discuss ethical issues in research involving animals. But whatever it is, there are certain obligations which researchers have which we might underline before we conclude. One is honesty, honesty of researchers to himself, to the work which he does, to the society, to fellow researchers, then integrity, minimal possible risk to participants and to themselves. This I am, I am repeatedly underlining this. Cultural sensitivity, I have already mentioned this. Transparency for what this research work is being conducted, it has to be published. See for instance, if a researcher is working in a university or a research organization, it is very important that before the research work begins, the permission of the authorities, the research authority, the organization authorities have to be taken in the sense that the organization authority would have appointed an institute review board or an ethics committee. Their permission is mandatory and there the researcher have to be transparent, they should reveal whatever information they have about the research process, wherever they anticipate a risk or a harm that is involved that has to be reported. Readiness to share with participants the benefit of research, this I have already indicated in the beginning. This benefits of the research can be of different types, in, on some occasions credit of the research work needs to be shared with fellow researchers and collaborators. On certain other occasions we need not do that because again when you publish an article, you can keep your colleagues as co-authors. The whole issue of who is the first author, second author, third author that is an issue. At the same time whether a particular researcher who collaborated with your work can be, his name can be included as an author, that itself involves an ethical issue. Just because somebody helped you on a couple of occasions does not mean that you should use or we can use that person's name. Keep that person's name, that person might get a credit, a publication, but that is not the objective of the research. The objective of the research definitely is not for people to get name and fame. It is 
the social benefit that matters. So, you have to recognize contributions of people based on the merit. If there is substantial contributions in the development of uh, uh, the ideas involved in uh, the uh, paper uh, which is published, you should definitely consider giving that person uh, authorship. But if there is no substantial contribution, but only help here and there, then you can just acknowledge that person. So, these are the things which researchers have to keep in mind when they take decisions about it. Social benefits are important than individual benefits. This is one very important thing we have to keep in mind. We all have responsibilities towards the society and social benefits are very important because as I mentioned and I repeat now, research is based on public trust. Again, proper risk management which has already been discussed uh, extensively in this lecture. Be aware of the risk, but not one has to be risk aware and not risk averse. And other important, if you reflect upon some other important issues in research, issues related to society where social benefit development and progress of the society is positively uh, some of the outcomes. Because a particular research will definitely have some very positive impacts on society. Say for instance, many research endeavors may not have a very explicit and direct positive impact upon the society. They might definitely have some impact, but certain other forms of research will have a very direct positive impact. So, in such cases, what should be the responsibilities of the researchers, of the funding agencies and several other considerations have to be taken into account. To other researchers, be responsible mentors, I have already mentioned this collaborative research where publication and authorship issues are involved and respecting intellectual property rights that is very important because as a researcher you should be aware of the fact that you are creating something which is going to contribute to the improvement of the scholarly community. And this can be done only if you respect intellectual property rights of other researchers do not discriminate, be responsible and take responsibility. One has to be, this is probably I will start, I will conclude with this, uh, this word that what is one of the most important or rather the most important idea in ethics or in research ethics is be responsible for what you do and take responsibility for what is happening. These are the two terms or rather one single term responsibility which is very important. I will conclude with these remarks. Thank you.